In Swane now, where the pressure is mounting on Swane Mayor Randall Williams to provide answers on a multi-billion rand unsolicited tender with an Australian energy company. Gauteng Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs MEC Lebo Khang Maile has written to Williams demanding answers. The mayor was forced to withdraw his report on the tender that was meant to provide Swane with alternative power that was following pushback from other political parties. Gauteng Cocktail MEC Lebo Khang Maile now joins us for more on the story. MEC, good morning and thank you very much for your time. Now I'm sure you've also heard the audio and seen all of those reports but process dictates that you seek written clarity around this matter from Mr. Williams himself but on the face of it it seems we have a political office bearer here involved in procurement processes what do you make of that aspect as a start good morning and thanks for having us um, it is precisely for that reason that we have written a letter to the mayor seeking clarity because as far as uh, we know and understand the law, politicians are not supposed to be involved in the tender processes or supply chain processes. Those are processes uh, which are uh, better managed by uh, senior managers uh, and uh, under the authority of the accounting officer or the city manager in a municipality. And that's why we uh, deem this, um, uh, we view these uh, allegations in a serious light. And we would like the mayor to clarify and provide reasons and give context as well, so that we can make a determination whether we should uh, exercise our responsibilities uh, as um, um, delegated by the law to. Um, uh, mm -hmm. And context is needed as a matter of urgency in this matter if we are to somehow draw any inferences from just that audio because at some point the mayor can be heard saying the official's role is just to implement this is an executive decision and that speaks to even bullying of those officials by politicians. That's why we would like to uh, get to the bottom of this. Uh, because uh, senior officials uh, are people who are uh, qualified, who are knowledgeable, uh, and who are supposed to be competent. That's why when they, uh, they get uh, appointed, they must go through a competency assessment to determine the level of their competency. So they, they should be told uh, by anybody uh, whether it's a mayor, a minister, or MEC, uh, how to do their work. Um, uh, and we, we often talk about professionalizing the public safety. And uh, I don't think there's any professional who will take time to uh, be told how to do their work. And it's important that we give uh, public service space, uh, especially when they are skilled, they qualified and competent to do their work to the best of the abilities. We have had uh, previously how politicians interfere in processes and the uh, officials end up being the one uh, who, uh, uh, who bear the brand for, 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 for the wrong position when in fact they have been forced to, to do that. So we are also interested in uh, protecting uh, the the, the public uh, uh, officials and also the integrity of the public service uh, uh, so that uh, people shouldn't think that in the public service um, mm. you just get told what to do, you don't have to uh, apply yourself and you don't have to uh, be independent. Mm -hmm. And as much as you are yet to bring yourself up to speed with all the details, but do indulge us. In the possible flouting of procurement regulations, by perhaps not opening the process up to potential bidders. I mean, we all know that legislation does allow for government to ever so often bypass the usual procurement processes in instances like when there's only one service provider that can in fact do the job. But what would be the process to satisfy oneself that only one service provider exists that can execute that function? How does one go about it? Well, uh... In my limited understanding, uh, once there is a what is a, a breach by one person, um, 
one company, mm. uh, you must still advertise uh, in public uh, to really determine that the uh, service that is being offered is uh, indeed um, being offered by this person only, or at the other uh, 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 parties uh, who can provide that service. Because the Financial Management Act um, has got uh, uh, underlying principles, uh, and, and these principles uh, include transparency, uh, accountability, competitiveness, uh, cost effectiveness uh, as well. So um, in dealing with the procurement matters uh, as a public uh, servant, you need to always ask yourself uh, whether the process we are involved in is transparent, whether it's going to, um, and, 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 and whether it's a, uh, uh, yeah, whether it's meeting all these uh, principles. Mm -hmm. Now, in this instance, the plans were stopped dead on their tracks by other politicians. There was a lot of pressure, so this matter would not be going through. It's alleged, but nevertheless, it won't be going through. If you were to find that there was an intention to flout processes by Mr. William, what would be the sanction in this regard? The councillors are governed by a code of conduct. And that code of conduct um, uh, indicate what uh, is expected of uh, all councillors. And uh, depending on the outcome, without uh, uh, predicting what should be the outcome, we will certainly uh, 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 table the matter before the council. And council will then have to institute a disciplinary hearing after which uh, they will make a recommendation to the MEC on what appropriate section, sanction should be taken. All right. Mr. MEC, Lebukhang Maile, thank you very much for your time. That's Cocta MEC Lebukhang Maile. And we do apologize for that order, a bit of network connection there. To this